Okay, um, hello statistics students. Let's work on problem number 21. Um, someone in the class had difficulty with it, so why don't we go over it? And hopefully this video won't get too long. The maximum weights in kilograms for which one repetition of a half squat can be performed and the jump heights in centimeters for 12 international soccer players are given in the accompanying table. The correlation coefficient is rounded to three decimal places is r is equal to 0 0.736. At the significance level of 0 0.05 or alpha is equal to 0 0.05, is there enough evidence to conclude that there is a significant linear correlation between the variables? Okay. So we're going to start with click the icon to view the soccer player data. Okay, there we go. And as usual, you know how I like to do this. So um, click on that little box. We're not going to open in StatCrunch. Um, I'm not a big fan of Stat, StatCrunch. We can copy to the clipboard. Excuse me, but... If we copy to the clipboard, there's going to be a lot of work involved in changing the text into numbers. That is actually a lot of work. So the easiest thing to do probably is just open in Excel. Okay, it's downloaded as an Excel file, and I think you guys have seen this many times already. All right, so click Done. Um, and as usual, you know, what is my directory? Uh, shift enter so my directory is users Douglas root actually this is root users Douglas if you're using a Windows machine uh, obviously it's gonna look a little bit different I'm using a Mac okay um, so we're going to do a set directory oops users Douglas downloads And file names. Okay. And this this is what I just downloaded. When you download something from Pearson, you know, it it has this form. When you download an Excel file from Pearson, it has that form. So data dash, you know, May 6th, 2020, 454 p.m. It's actually 4.54 p.m. Eastern Time. It's really, uh, as you can see from my clock here, it's about 3.56 p.m. right now. Okay, so this is this is Eastern Time. This is New York City Time. Okay, I think Pearson is in Boston. I think it's, I think it's a Boston uh, company. Okay, we're going to change that name. Rename file. I'd like to give it a better name, something a little bit easier to remember. Uh... Let me copy and paste. Okay, let's call that problem 21. And of course, you must keep the extension XLSX. You must keep the extension, otherwise you're gonna have problems, okay? And then after that, we're gonna import the data. So I'm gonna call it what should I call it? My data is equal to import problem 21.xlsx. Whoops, xlsx, and I'm importing data, numerical data. Okay. So what I have is a list of a list of a list of lists. So. Um, this needs to be flattened by one level. If you, if you look here at the left, you can see that I have three layers or three levels of lists. That's one too many. All right, that's a little too much. So what I'm gonna do is my data is equal to flatten. My data, flatten it by one level. So now I have two levels of lists instead of three levels of lists, okay? Also, I don't need the header. It says maximum weight X, and what is maximum weight? That's in kilograms, and the jump height is in centimeters, but really, for this problem, we don't need to be that specific. 
and we don't really need um, we, we don't need the header we don't need the header so how do you get rid of that well it's pretty easy it's just gonna be my data is equal to rest my data okay fantastic so now I have the numbers without the headers because the headers uh, could cause problems that these headers are not numbers and if I include that in a numerical calculation Mathematica's interpreter is going to become confused okay so these are my 12 numbers I'm pretty sure I have 12 sets of data let's see, or 12 points let's see my data 12 okay so that's important okay so let's get going here determine the null and alternative hypotheses well in this type of situation what we're determining is um, is there a linear relationship or not? And if there's no linear relationship, then the population, core, the population correlation coefficient is equal to zero. Okay, so I'm assuming here, let's say there is no linear relationship between X and Y, then the population correlation coefficient is assumed to be zero. And of course, the alternative hypothesis is the opposite. I'm assuming that, you know, the population correlation coefficient is not equal to zero. I don't know which one to accept and which one to reject at this point. But this is how you start the problem. You have a null hypothesis, you have an alternative hypothesis. At the end, you're going to reject one of them, right? So let's check the answer. Are we okay? Okay, so Pearson accepts the answer. Then it says determine the critical value. Okay, so for this, for these problems, we have to use, here, let me move this over to the right a little bit. Wait, hold on one second. <clears throat> let me just move that over. Okay, so for this, we have to use the student T distribution, right? And remember, uh, alpha is 0 0.05. All right, so... Uh, let's see here, PDF, actually, no, sorry, CDF, uh, actually, I want a specific T-score, so I believe I'll be using inverse CDF student T-distribution 10, not 12, it's going to be this number minus 2. So if you have 12 data points, 12 minus 2 is 10, you want the student T distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. Okay, inverse CDF, because we're actually looking for a T value along the horizontal axis, this is going to be 1 minus the alpha level divided by 2. All right, and what is that number? That number is 2.228 more or less, so... Uh, it says round to three decimal places as needed. Use a comma to separate answers as needed. So here, what I could do is um, number form. My last answer, infinity means use all the digits to the left of the decimal point, And I want three digits to the right of the decimal point, 2.228. So we're going to have two answers here, negative 2.228, negative 2 positive 2. Negative 2.228 and positive 2.228. Let's see if that's correct. Okay, so uh, Pearson likes my answer, as you can see. Determine the standardized test statistic so this is a little bit tricky we have to use a formula um, first of all we we have to figure out the correlation coefficient but we not really because if you look in the problem the problem says here that we're supposed to assume that the correlation coefficient is 0 0.736 okay so they're giving us they're giving us the correlation coefficient to work with um, R is equal to approximately 0 0.736, okay? And we're supposed to find the test statistic, okay? So to do that, uh, 
hold on just one moment. Where is my recorder? Okay, so there are different formulas we can use. I believe this formula is a, that I just wrote here is a little bit different from the one used in your textbook, but it should be equivalent. Um, so let's see if this is going to work. We've defined r up here. r is equal to 0 0.736. Okay. t is an undefined variable. Now this is going to be equal to 0. And we have to try to figure out what is t. Let's start with a guess of 0, which is as good a guess as any. And we'll let Mathematica find the exact solution. Well, almost the exact solution. All right. And let's see. Shift Enter. So it says here that my critical T is 3.43796 uh, approximately. And we are supposed to round that to three decimal places. So T is equal to T as it's defined on the previous line. Okay, so number form T, infinity, and we're going to round to three decimal places, 3.438, 3.438, that should be correct. Okay, Pearson accepts the answer. Now this to me is the hardest part of the problem. So we're done with the number crunching, now we have to worry about the interpretation. What is the conclusion? Okay. So 3.438 is in the rejection region. It is not in between negative 2.228 and positive 2.228. It's in the rejection region of 3.438, which means we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So fill in reject and then we would say there is enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to conclude that there is a significant linear correlation between the maximum weight for one repetition of a half squat and the jump height. And let's see if Pearson accepts this answer. Okay, that's it. Now you guys know how to do problem number 21. Let me know if you liked the video and um, and if you didn't like it, then don't let me know. Okay, so take care and have a wonderful day.